Hey guys, welcome back to Andy's Dinosaur Reviews, and today we have something super cool to take a look at. We have yet another prehistoric mammal from TNG, and I have absolutely been loving every second of these new TNG releases. They have been just such a joy to add to my collection, and again, the fact that they just came out of completely nowhere and have been delivering some of the best figures we've ever seen has been super, super cool. And this time, we are going to go ahead and check out the Elasmotherium, and when it comes to these TNG models, I would say this Elasmotherium might be one of the most requested when it comes to a review out of all of the figures that they're releasing and all of the figures I've taken a look at so far. I really think this might be one of the most requested. You can see that it has a very cool appearance, very similar to the Moosey model that was released because this was actually sculpted by that sculptor, so that's why it looks very similar. You can also see again, it as far as the box art goes, looks pretty much like it usually does when it comes to the TNG models. There's not a whole lot going on, a little tear on mine over there. And you can also see, again, some information over here on the Elasmotherium, which is pretty cool that they include that stuff on here as well. So I'm actually really hyped to take a look at this. Let's pop it out of the box and do just that. And here is our TNG Elasmotherium looking pretty much exactly as it did on the front of the box the paintwork looks phenomenal on this like a lot of these tng models have had really really good paintwork and that's one of the things i think that has impressed me the most about these tng models like going into them i didn't expect them to be painted as good as they are like they actually have some of the nicest paint apps i've seen on mass produced you know factory produced figures which has been really exciting and i can definitely see that same thing again for this elasmotherium definitely sporting a lot of really really subtle color variation throughout the course of the model so let's go ahead jump to a closer look at this gorgeous elasmotherium right now so starting up here at the head sculpt of our elasmotherium you can see some really nice looking skin texture from the snout here leading back toward the eye but on top of that we also have some nice fur picking up here up above the head and i think it all looks really nice there's a very nice dark grayish tone for the face of the elasmotherium for the you know skin textured area there's also a really nice kind of a glossy look here for the mouth and nose and snout basically the entire area up here on the snout of the elasmotherium they've also highlighted the nostrils nicely with a darker tone as well as the mouth so definitely some really nice paintwork there the eyes are painted with a brown given a nice black pupil and you can kind of see them shining there so they do sport a nice gloss coat as you lead up here into that extra large horn that we have for our elasmotherium first of all you could see the transition from the brown to the gray of the horn is incredibly smooth but you can also see as we lead up that horn is fantastic as far as the fine detail goes as you kind of let the light hit it you can pick up on all the cracks and crevices and all the incredibly impressive detailing that is contained within the horn of the elasmotherium there's also kind of like a nice bend to the horn as well and then as you lead back here into the ear, you can see the ear is kind of outlined with a black. And there's also, again, some nice sculpting and detailing in that area. As you lead down here into the side of the face of the elasmotherium, you have kind of shaggy fur and stuff leading off of the side of the head. Even more shaggy fur leading off of the, you know, underside of the throat. And you can see just as you move into this area, quite a bit of variation of browns. You can see like a nice looking brown. You can see a lighter brown, a darker brown. So there's a whole bunch of variation of color as you move through. And you'll continue to see that as you move through the course of the figure as far as, again, different variations of browns that are pretty much littering this entire figure. And again, as we lead down here along the underside, look at all of that fur just kind of hanging off of the throat leading down into the chest. It looks super, super cool. And again, the actual fine detail of that fur is incredibly impressive as you move back up here you can see again more fluffy fur kind of shaggy fur leading up into the back as we get to that like little hump area in the back of the elasmotherium you can again see that the fur is just kind of rough and rugged and all over the place pretty much exactly as i would expect to see but you can again also see on top of all the really cool curvatures of the fur you can see a lot of variation of color again with all sorts of different variations of browns and as we move down here one thing i'm picking up on which even though we're not even in that spot we kind of have like the rib cage sort of outlined with darker browns and then lighter variations of browns and stuff there contained within that area as well but as you lead down into the front leg you again see see more fluffy fur right there leading down it 
becomes a little bit more fine as you lead down toward the foot of our elasmotherium. As you lead all the way down, you can see the foot sculpt looks really nice. We have some nicely painted nails with a variation of a brown, and the nails kind of have a little bit of a satin shine to them, giving them that nice realistic you know, kind of a shine. You can see more fur kind of hanging off of the stomach. Again, this thing just looks like it's got one of the most impressive coats of fur I've ever seen. And that's, again, what you would expect for an animal living in such cold conditions. So you can see, again, all sorts of, you know, fur hanging off of the stomach. And again, all kinds of variations of brown like we've seen the whole way through so far. And then as you lead back here, you can kind of make out the hip bone a little bit. You can also, even though you can't really see the muscle definition too much because of the fur kind of obscuring it, you can see that that is a very impressively large thigh leading down. And again, look at all that variation of color. Like, I really can't even point it all out to you. Like, I can't specifically pinpoint each and every transition of the variations of browns. There's just so much to it. I really didn't even pick up on how much until I actually got it up here in a nice light. But as you lead down, again, you've got some more fine fur leading down into the foot. Yet again, the very nicely sculpted and painted nails. And then you lead back up here toward the tail. You can see we have some really fine fur leading off of the tail. As we lead down here, we've got a little tuft of fur here at the end of the tail that also has a very dark shade of brown for it. If you lead along the underside, again, all of the detailing down here looks great. All very, very high quality fur details detail. Definitely a lot of work went into sculpting this. And then as you take a look over here, again, our elasmotherium looks super, super grumpy. But as you lead back, pretty much the same appearance to the head sculpt. The horn and everything looks the same. I like that the horn also has kind of a shine to it. Similar to what we see on the skin there of the face, you can also see it's present there on the horn itself. But as you lead back, you can see that our elasmotherium has its head turned to the left, so it's kind of stretching the skin a little bit more over here, which you can kind of see some slight creasing there when it comes to the actual skin, even if it's covered with fur, it seems like it's a fairly like thin coat of fur in that area, or at least more fine looking fur. And again, you look at all the colors, like so many variations of brown. It's actually baffling to me how nice the paintwork is on this. But as you continue to lead back, you can see more wavy fur as you lead down the front leg here. I like that this leg is taking a step forward, so it's lifting up off of the ground. Actually, it looks like it might be coming down. Like it looks like it's still in the process of lifting up, but heading toward the ground because the other leg is trailing quite far. But that's also, again, nicely sculpted out. You have a nice bend there in the wrist of the figure. And as you move down, the foot sculpt yet again looks really nice over here. We can get a better look at all of the kind of saggy fur, the hanging fur that's over here on the stomach region because the legs are spread further apart than we had seen on the initial side. So we definitely have a much better opportunity to kind of take a look at all of that fur detail on this side and also again all of the incredible color variation as there is just a mountain of different variations of browns and light tans and stuff included in the paint application of this model and you can also see this leg here is kind of trailing as well just like the you know front leg on the other side is trailing this leg on this side the rear leg on this side is trailing because again it shows the walking movement of the elasmotherium quite nicely again the foot sculpt looks really good so this is an absolutely phenomenal elasmotherium and i actually would have a hard time not stating that this is probably the best one in my collection right now like there is a very very good chance that is the case i didn't think i'd ever find one that could you know potentially boot out the collect a deluxe version as the best one that i own but there's a very good chance this TNG version may have just done that. As far as a size goes, that's one of the more uh, shocking aspects to me. I kind of expected it to be a little bit bigger than it is. I don't know why. But for a length from the snout to the tail, just shy of six inches, maybe I would say a little probably closer to five and three quarter inches or right around 14 and a half centimeters. And then for a height to the top of the horn, about four and a half inches or right around 11, approaching 11 and a half centimeters for a size comparison here is mr papo t-rex the attack pack colovasaurus and robert muldoon from the mattel jurassic world toy line next to our tng elasmotherium helping to show you again that it's not a massive figure before another comparison there is the tng mega Cerops as well for a comparison next to our elasmotherium giving you a good idea of what the size difference is between two different tng prehistoric mammals and then there is the elasmotherium and the stegodon from 
TNG. Their tails are kind of meeting over there, but again, giving you an idea of the fact that none of their prehistoric mammals so far have been particularly large, which makes them actually quite convenient when it comes to collecting because they're not overly large or obnoxiously large that they would be hard to fit into your collection. But for another comparison, there is the TNG Smilodon as well next to the Elasmotherium, showing you quite a variety of different prehistoric mammals that TNG has to offer, but for another comparison, there is the Papo Woolly Rhinoceros next to our TNG Elasmotherium, and you can get a pretty good idea of the fact that these two figures are very similar in size. So if you do have the Papo version of the Woolly Rhino, you'll already have a pretty good idea, I think, as far as what the size of the TNG figure is. And then for the comparison that I think most people probably wanted to see, we've got the Elasmotherium from collect a next to the elasmotherium from tng and you can see again that very distinctive that very unique horn sticking up out of the head but you can also see there is a massive difference in size between the two but again it's a really really tough decision to choose whether i like the tng version or the collect a version more i really don't know that i could honestly pick one over the other but I definitely think it's a very strong possibility that I might like the TNG version a little bit more, but I really can't say definitively. However, if you do have the Collect A version, you'll have a pretty good idea of the fact that the TNG version is quite a bit smaller. So this TNG Elasmotherium is absolutely gorgeous. Definitely another really, really cool release from TNG, and I'm loving all of these prehistoric mammals. I kind of am like psyched about the fact that they've decided to go with so many prehistoric mammals for their initial wave of figures, because we only really had a Spinosaurus and Quetzalcoatlus outside of all of the mammals, I think, so far, and then it was just a sea of prehistoric mammals that we've had so far, and uh, I also have a woolly mammoth that I'll be reviewing very soon from them as well. And this Elasmotherium, again, is great, looking very much so like the Moosey model that was released quite a ways back, which is definitely a good thing for collectors like myself that didn't have the opportunity to own the Moosey version, that larger version that was released. We now can purchase it with this incredibly beautiful smaller version from TNG, and I love the fact that the quality of the model is incredibly high quality like i would say just as high quality here as i had seen on that original release of the Moosey version so that's super exciting for anybody that was interested in picking this one up and maybe you were worried about the quality well don't worry it is absolutely phenomenal the sculpt is incredibly crisp incredibly vibrant the Fine detail as well is honestly out of this world when you look at the fur detail on this Elasmotherium. And on top of that, we've got a pretty nice pose as it's just walking along. Got a nice little turn to the head, which I think looks all nice and natural. Definitely really well done as far as that goes. And the paint application of these TNG models continues to be incredibly impressive because yet again, we have one of the nicest paint jobs I think I've seen on a prehistoric mammal there's so many different tones of color added to this so much variation of color just really blowing my mind with how good these paint jobs are on the TNG models it has me so hyped to see some more of their dinosaurs at some point in the near future when that stuff actually begins to release I really can't wait to see more of their stuff and uh Again, if the paint jobs of these mammals are any sign of what's to come with the dinosaurs, I am going to be one happy camper when I start to get a hold of some of those other dinosaur models. But honestly, again, the paint job looks great. The sculpt looks great. The size is great. Everything about this is fantastic. So if you are interested in picking this up, I will include a link in the description to where you can do that right now. So make sure you check that link. Go grab this gorgeous Elasmotherium and also like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you in the next review. Thanks for watching. Thank <laughs> you.